Ladies and gentlemen, as I stated, we're going to do a video on corporate responsibility and we're going to add in the difference between corporate responsibility and corporate social responsibility because there's a pretty distinct difference between the two. But before we get started with that, like, subscribe, and share or you'll be visited by a reptilian hybrid from the Rockefeller Foundation to steal your soul. Mind caught. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, to start off with, I'm going to go ahead and define a couple terms for you, and I'm going to read it directly off the paper to make sure there's no mistakes as I go through this. Corporate responsibility is a term which has come to characterize a family of professional disciplines intended to help a corporation stay competitive by maintaining accountability to its main, its four main stakeholder groups, customers, employees, shareholders, and communities. The four types of co corporate social responsibility are philanthropy, environmental conservation, diversity and labor practices, and volunteerism. Now, with corporate responsibility, it, it can be broken down to the purpose of a corporation is to maintain or grow its profit margins. That way, it provides what, whatever services or products to its customers, it is able to keep employees employed, shareholders continue to make money off the company, and communities benefit from the tax dollars that those employees bring in, the local taxes paid, as well as volunteer stuff like some corporations have partnered with Habitat for Humanity and things like this. Now when we talk about social responsibility. Bill Gates is a good example of philanthropy with how much money he donates every year to various causes. He's very big on immunization and vaccines, which people, you can come up with whatever, whatever conspiracy theory you want, but by the same token, it's still being done. They're still providing for the good. Environmental conservation, there are corporations that have partnered with different groups, such as the Sierra Club, to lessen their environmental impact and to also create green spaces and things like this. Diversity and labor practices, that goes back to equality and equity of employment. And volunteerism, we talked about giving employees time to volunteer with Habitat for Humanities or soup kitchens or just things that benefit society as a whole. Well, as part of maintaining profitability and lowering your bottom line cost, one of the ways many corporations have done this is moving manufacturing into developing or third world countries, but especially China. I, I'm not going to go much farther than China with this because it, it's one that's fairly well known. It's easy to find information about. And in the process, you, you'll come to realize some things are going on in China. There's a minority population in China known as the Uyghur Muslims, over a million of which are believed to be in concentration slash forced labor camps. In fact, the province where those camps exist are the same province where the Disney Corporation filmed the live action Mulan movie. In fact, in the credits, they thank the same security forces for helping them that have those Uyghur Muslims enslaved, imprisoned, enslaved, whatever you want. Because the two links in a description of this video, one talks about all the co companies found that are headquartered in the United States that do manufacturing in China. The second is a list of 88 companies that benefit from the forced labor of the Uyghur Muslims that are imprisoned. And I'm not telling you to boycott them. I'm telling you to make yourself aware of what's going on. Because things like this keep happening in the world. And yes, we like cheap manufactured goods. One of the companies on that list of 88 is Nike. I own several pairs of Nikes and have for years, all the way back to when I was in the Army for physical training. I heard a rumor, but it wasn't on the list of 88, but Apple was doing the same thing. And yes, I like Apple products. But I really got to start questioning myself and where I'm going to put support because these companies are using manufacturing labor that the Nazi party was condemned for. Just let that sink in for a moment. You have an enslaved population 
that are producing manufactured goods that are being sold for a profit throughout the world. Many of these companies using this are headquartered within the United States. It's kind of scary. And I'm not big on boycotts. You do what you think is right. But when you have a company like Nike, which wants to get behind and sponsor BLM or other controversial people here that you think are standing up for something, let's say a company is using slave labor in China to produce their goods because it lowers their bottom line cost of manufacturing, which means they can sell it for a little bit less and still maintain profitability. Now, if, as in the case of Japan, Japan came up with several incentives for their companies to divest from China and bring manufacturing back to Japan. Should we do the same thing as a country, which I think we should? Yes, the cost of those goods will go up, but the solution is twofold. One, we'll bring jobs back to the United States, and two, the Chinese no longer have as much reason to keep these people enslaved if the manufacturing is gone and maybe bring pressure upon them to close these camps, to not use people like this. But I don't know what's going to happen. Just I'm putting out the information to you. Corporations' job is to make money and to continue to make money. By doing that, they keep people employed, their stockholders make money, and they can contribute. The flip side... Their social responsibilities sometimes go by the wayside for profitability. It's happened throughout history, and we're not talking about the steel barons or the railroad barons. It's a whole different world now. It's a world of haves and have-nots. And people can say whatever they want about the way corporations treat people. I know in the state of Missouri, in Pulaski County, Missouri, you have the Army Base Fort Leonard Wood, which is the largest employer in that area. The second largest is Walmart. And people can say what they want about what Walmart does or doesn't do as a corporation, but they do employ a lot of people. And honestly, if you don't like what they pay an hour, then go find another job that's better. If you don't have the skills to do that, then get the skills. We condemn corporations for what they do, and I'll condemn the ones that do business in China because it's a very self-interested portion that makes them do that. They don't worry about the Uyghur Muslims because 98% of the United States population doesn't even know what a Uyghur Muslim is. They probably think it's a character from Star Wars. But they're not. They're people. They're families. They're men, women, and children that are being forced to produce your Nikes. So think about this next time you complain about the cost of something going up because it's now manufactured in the United States. Think about this when you go to buy that pair of shoes and in the back of your head, you're going, wait a minute. I just saw a video where somebody was talking about slave labor. The links are in the description. Read them. Do your own research. You don't have to just believe me. With that, everybody have a good evening. As Colonel Gleek said, like, subscribe, share, comment. If not, that reptilian hybrid from the Rothschilds or the Rockefeller Foundation will come find you and steal your soul for the Galactic Federation. Good night. Ich bin Anti-Communist.